let's start the strategy video out with the sweet spot ranks and scores. So if you're on that cheat sheet, again, file, make a copy, put on that DraftKings uh, filter, and then you can go ahead and filter down in the SS rank to, to show you who my number one golfer is, or basically just my top golfers. Patrick Canley is my number one golfer. John Rahm is second, followed by Scotty Scheffler, Tony Finau, Brian Harmon, so on and so forth. You see, you see all the names. Now, I want to share what goes into that, uh, into those scores because, in case you're wondering, um, I want to be as transparent with you as possible. So, we're looking at the OWGR points. This is really just a way to separate the top end guys from the lower end guys. You're going to want some of these in your lineup anyways, so why not give them a little bit of a boost? Especially when, you know, if a rookie is coming on tour and they have really good recent form stats and those are the only stats that we have, I'd like something to kind of push the better golfers who are more established a little bit more. And you can see it's, it's not a huge point difference between like Cantlay, 98.6. Well, I should say this. Scotty Scheffler, number two in the world, he doesn't have a huge advantage over Patrick Cantley, just one point. But if we were to scroll down into the 6K range, like, you know, Ben Martin, he, he has zero OWGR points for him. And I would want that type of gap between him and, say, Scotty Scheffler. So it's not a huge one, but there is one. Uh, I, I like to include it because it just seems to, it just, it seems to be consistent. Like, my rankings are pretty good week in and week out. I am looking at two types of grass stats. One is bent grass, which if you, I put out a YouTube short, I also put this in my tournament and course information portion of the preview. If you don't have rye grass, my second grass that I think you guys should look into is bent grass. I think that's the way to do it. If you don't have either of those grasses to look at, probably don't look at any grass stats, honestly. Because it's not Bermuda. I used to live out here, by the way, if you, if you were unaware. Used to live out here. I've golfed on these golf courses. I know how they play. The rough is very similar to Minnesota golf. Uh, not, not the rough, the fairways. The fairways are very similar to Minnesota fairways. The greens are very similar to Minnesota greens. That's because in the wintertime, they overseed. And you saw that yesterday in the preview video when I went over the course and, and tournament information. It just, yeah. it's too cold. Too cold to, for the Bermuda to grow out there. Will there be some Bermuda that can survive? Sure. Like, I'm not going to disagree with that, but it's very minimal. You're going to see that yellowish brown grass um, in the rough. One of my friends, Caddy's out there. He sent me a couple videos of him walking around the golf course. I haven't seen it more yellow ever. Like sometimes you see little green patches of, of grass here and there. That's kind of the Bermuda kind of sprouting through. Like it's, it's warm, warm enough for some of the grass to grow. Maybe there's some, you know, hey, sometimes overseed can spill into the rough and then you have those green patches there because of that. But if you've never actually hit off of dormant Bermuda, um, it's very brittle grass. The ball usually uh, lays on top of it. You can get flyer lies pretty darn easy. It's the easiest grass to hit out of. There's like no resistance. So that's why I don't look at Bermuda stats whatsoever. They're not going to be on the greens. They're not going to be around the green. Just don't look at Bermuda. And it is overseeded with POA. But it's, it's such a brief season to have the POA on there that it doesn't really quite quote unquote bud. You know, like that's what you normally hear with POA is, you know, the, the flowering process of, of the grass creates these buds that make the, the greens a little uneven. They make it a little bumpy. That's why I personally, I wouldn't look at POA. The, these greens are going to roll pretty straight, pretty true. In my opinion, it's ryegrass all the way. Ryegrass is also known to be a little stickier than bent grass, so that's the only thing that I would distinguish differences between the two. So I would I would use ryegrass, just like I said in the video. If not, then use bent grass. Anyways, 
that's grass number one. I went on a little little tirade there. <laughs> uh, grass one would be your bent grass because I don't have rye grass. Grass two is just peat dye. I'm looking at peat dye stats. This is pretty watered down, so it's not like you know golfers who have a really good advantage on on peat dye golf courses are getting that big of a bump. But I do want to add that just to add a little bit of an advantage to those that are good uh, at Pete Dye Golf Courses. We're looking at tournament history. I know yesterday in the preview video, I forgot to, to mention this. I, I call them course history buckets. So when I talk about the bucket system, I kept saying course history buckets. They're tournament history buckets. I still want to use that because this tournament is unique. And if you play here enough with the Pro-Am and stuff like that, I definitely want to give you a boost for those that do play well at this tournament um, dating back, you know, the last several years. So I'm still going to use tournament history in my scoring. Obviously, that's what I did here, and that's how I got my ranks. Then we're looking at season long, bogey avoidance, birdie or better, driving distance. The further you hit the ball, you're just going to have better possibilities of scoring, better scoring possibilities. Uh, not if you're erratic. I understand that. Like, if you're not accurate, yeah, you won't have those advantages. But... I still want to see driving distance because if that is high, more likely you have enough power to have shorter irons into the greens. Shorter irons are more accurate. So that's why I like looking at driving distance. And we're looking at recent form averages for DraftKings points, their finishing position, as well as their scoring average. This goes to the last seven weeks. We've really only had like two other weeks of PGA Tour events. So... If you wanted to on, on your cheat sheet, again, link in the description below for that cheat sheet. If you wanted to remove this, all you got to do is select over these and hit delete. Now, the ranking won't be uh, updated because I don't have a formula in here. It gets really wonky when you put filters on there, but the score over here will be updated. So if you really wanted to, it's going to take a little work for, on your end. You could either put a ranking formula in here to go off the score here, or if you wanted to, when you put that filter on, I don't know, can you see on the spreadsheet? No, you can't. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Um, what you could do is the filter as this range right here. You could change this range from EB over to ED, as in dog, as in delta. And that would cover the score. And then you could filter by this. And then basically just type in a 1, a 2, and then this little, uh, little box down here, click and drag this all the way down to the bottom. And that will update. Basically, it's, it's a rough version of, of what you should do with the ranking system, but you could do that if you wanted to. I'm going to keep those recent form stats in there because they're already watered down. Some of the golfers aren't getting that huge of a, a, a bump. You can see most of these guys have 40s for their um, their DK average points. Then 30. We scroll down. Some of these guys are going to have 20s, even if they like didn't even play. So it's not a huge, not a huge bonus. But I definitely want to give a bonus to those that have played recently. Uh, so if you don't you don't agree with that, just delete those. It's fine. Delete these columns. Outside of the recent form stats, then I'm looking at season-long stats. These are my stats that I've recorded for the last year. So we're looking at DraftKings points, their scoring average, rounds under 70%, cut made percentage, DK top 10. This is based off of the field, this current field. Who's the best at, at or who's the best in these stats? Get 100 points, and then it kind of scales down from there. So these are more kind of static points that I give when golfers get to certain thresholds. This is based off of who's the best in each of these categories. And then it's scaled down based off of how far away they are from those players, from the best players. So hopefully that gives a little idea of how the score is made. And again, my number one guy, Patrick Cantlay, followed by John Rahm, Scotty Scheffler, Tony Finau, Brian Harmon. You can see these, these names pretty much follows the salary ranks by DraftKings. You know, if you want to call it the salary leaderboard, you can kind of see some of the discrepancies that I have. Like Tom Kim and Sam Burns. I mean, Burns is really close. Don't get me wrong. But he's he's number nine in the salary ranks. He's number 10 in my rankings. So Sam Burns is right where he should be. 
Tom Kim might be a little bit off. Just a little bit. I don't think it's a big deal, honestly. But if that is enough for you to throw you off, then so be it. Uh, Brian Harmon, by the way. Harmon is ranking out really well. I think that's a pretty good value play. And then our winner last week, Siwoo Kim. Uh, the sweet spot rankings kind of not doing him any justice. And that's fine. I, I don't think... Like, Siwoo is a really good golfer. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not going to make the same mistake I made last week. I was telling a lot of people uh, in the comments of my videos, like, I deselected him so many times in my optimizer. Because my optimizer would just pick a guy at random as long as my exposure levels are, you know, set for him, which they were. He just kept popping up. I'm like, no, I don't trust Siwoo. Don't want to play Siwoo. Don't want to play Siwoo. And he was actually a pretty decent price tag last week. And, and last week was... What, he was $8,200 last week. That was a weaker field than this week, and he's $1,000 more. So it kind of stinks missing out on him. Probably should have played him last week. I'm not going to shy away from playing him this week. Hey, golfers get on heaters, so I don't see there being an issue with playing Siwoo. Uh, let me check with chat here. Joanne, thank you. Smart move on the grass. I think it's smart. I mean, I, I went to school for golf course management which included agronomy classes i think bent and and ryegrass pretty similar you could you could use those those two stats pretty interchangeably and barry r yes let's go all right cam young's number nine i'm not gonna go through all the rankings i just want to show you i mean what i typically like to do is sort by the rankings and kind of see some golfers who might be misplaced like siwoo number 18 He's pretty far. I mean, there's Tom Hoagie that ranks better than him. JT Poston at $8,000. That's a pretty good value. He's ra ranking out better than Siwoo Kim. You know, Sahith Tagala might be a little overpriced. It's very volatile. I do like Sahith this week. And then the rest of these guys, Taylor Montgomery might be a little overpriced, but I do like, I do like Montgomery. But yeah, look at a lot of these 7K golfers compared to the 8K, 9K golfers around them and kind of just see the different values. I'm not going to put a huge emphasis in there in this. I want you to know though that these rankings, really it's the score, the score for these golfers goes into the uh the optimizer. So you can see those those metrics. This is your sweet spot score. And obviously the sweet spot score then goes into the ranking. So I will be using this. Now, if you wanted this optimizer, it's easy for you to go in here and change the values to whatever you want it. Like if you don't like Scotty Scheffler, you could put zero points. If you like John Rahm, you could put 1500. I would say this, if you do that, just go in here, copy all this, paste it somewhere else. Like I do that with a lot of these things, uh, like my, my bucket system information. Sometimes if there are minimums that I don't care to choose, I'll copy them from here and paste them in a in an open column. So if you wanted to, you know, not lose what these metrics are, you can do that. Otherwise, I don't know. Did I actually? I don't think I did. Um, yeah, I didn't save the dream sheet yet. I will do that before sending it. But the dream sheet, there'll be a tab on this optimizer that will have will look just like what I was showing you. Will look just like this. And all the way over to the right will be the, the score. The, so you could actually update that if you wanted to. You could go from the, the Dream Sheet tab to the optimizer and save those values back in here. But hit the back button a couple times and just keep the metrics as, as they are. Um, yeah, Thigala. I, I don't mind Thigala this week. I think it's a, a pretty... Pretty good play. I like the volatility that comes with him this week. I think it's a perfect play. All right. So those were your ranks and your scores. 